Riedel. I want to go to Melissa Arno right now because I want you to take a peek at the lower right portion of your screen looking at the Dow soaring today. Uh, this is the first day of October. That surprised a lot of people. It really has little to do with the drama in the Capitol as much as people try to link that. It had everything to do with some promising news on uh, vaccines, uh, virus cases going down, and uh, one out of Merck that could be a pill to treat the vaccine. Um, that was the catalyst for a lot of this. But none of this, I guess, Melissa, for the time being, a worry for the markets, um, even if they come up, you know, zero. What do you think? Well, the market has been worried, Neil. We fell all week until today. And even this morning, we were down before we rallied. So yes, we had a good close. Thank God we had a good close into the end of the week on Friday. But remember Monday, that was just a couple of days ago. We were down huge. We have fallen hard from off the highs, which was about two but weeks ago. But wasn't that ago. a lot, Melissa, a lot early in the week on fears that they wouldn't even get the short-term funding thing through, the government would be pushed to the brink. Now, we got a little breathing room because they did write off on something that kind of keeps the government lights on, uh, you know, through October 18th or so, and then all bets are off. But uh, there was a lot of worry about that. I, I guess the reason why I bring that up, Melissa, is that could there be similar confidence here that even though this looks perilous now, they'll come up with at least a vote on the infrastructure itself package, uh, putting aside this far more gargantuan one? I think the market would prefer the 1.5 trillion, even though that's an astronomical number than the 3.5 trillion. How are we going to pay for this, Neil? I've read a lot about this in the last week. So far, raising the corporate tax rate to 21 to 26 percent and then high earners for 37 to 39. Supposedly, that's only going to generate 2 trillion in revenue to cover this for the next 10 years. The big 3.5 trillion, it's still going to fall short. As much as Nancy Pelosi is selling this to the American people that this is going to help the little guy and it's going to the rich people are going to pay for this. Let me tell you something, Neil, the rich people never turn out on the on the downside. <laughs> the little guy is going to end up paying for this. You're already seeing this now with the cost of goods and services, gas, food, everything going up. Well, you know, Melissa, um, let's say uh, they get something on, on this human infrastructure you know, deal, uh, but it's not nearly as big that you could switch that around and say then the tax increases to pay for don't have to be as big this is me taking the leap here that we don't even know what they're doing how would investors respond to that because you think about it how investors react go a long way toward you know you think about it paying for all of this well remember the market rallied and was very bullish during the trump tax cuts We've had a very bullish period in the last five years. Now, I know the market has rallied this year, but that was really the COVID recovery. We're going into a period here, into 2022, where even the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, said he expects inflation to continue and interest rates could go up in 2022. That's not good for anyone. We can't increase corporate tax rates too much. So if they if they keep them the same or lower them less, like you're stating, I definitely think the companies would react positive to that. The problem I'm really seeing for the country right now is, Neil, how many people really voted this in? I heard you discussing this earlier with Martha. Is this really what people voted in who voted for Joe Biden? Don't forget, half the country voted for Trump. And the people that voted for Joe Biden thought he was a moderate. Now this seems we're moving towards more socialists, where you have all these entitlements. And like you said as well, it's really hard to pull those back. Then once they're given out there, they tend to carry on and last forever. I'm not so sure that this is the direction that the majority of the country wants to go. Most of the people in the country are not far right. And most of the people in the country are not far left. Why are the Democrats trying to push this leftist agenda? You know, on that point, Melissa, I just want to pick your brand on this. The argument for and Democrats pushing this is that it will give a sugar high to the economy. I'm, not, I'm you know, very much trivializing and, and simplifying what they're saying is that it's going to goose the economy. And it, it, it's going to goose the economy at just the right time into the midterms. Uh, there is the inflation risk that you raise, uh, but that it'll do, uh, you know, more good than bad. Uh, at, at timing is everything. And by next year at this time, it will all be good. What do you say to that? No, I disagree with that. Boost the economy. We boosted the economy when we had the stimulus. Co companies had the PPP loans. They had two of them. We, we're on our fourth stimulus check now some people are getting. They have the child tax credit. People are getting $300 per child until the end of the year. What, what more stimulus do we need? Eventually, we have to pay this back. 
while it might have an uptick initially, just like the stimulus we've seen in the last 19 months, it's going to come to a head, and it's going to come to a head sooner than people realize. And by soon, I mean six to 12 months. You cannot continue to borrow without paying it back. It's like if you borrowed money on a credit card, Neil, and you can make the minimum payment, that's fine. But when you have to borrow to make the minimum payment on what you borrow, don't you see that's a problem? And we're heading down some very dangerous road. I heard you discussing these numbers. They're, they're crazy numbers. You can see in two years now, we'll be talking about 10 trillion. I mean, when does it end? I mean, I can't pay for it all. You can't pay for it all. Your kids can't pay for it all. What's going to happen is the value of the dollar is going to go down. And all these cryptocurrencies that everyone's in love with, I'm not a big proponent of them, but some people love them. Guess what? People are going to start talking about other forms of besides the dollar to go to. We don't want to devalue our currency. It's very important to have a strong dollar. Well, somehow, remarkably, uh, over decades, Republican and Democratic presidents, as we've been piling this up, uh, it's been Operation Ignore. So, um, you know, eventually that stops. We just don't know when that, that would be. Uh, Melissa, thank you very much. Melissa Armo. Um, I, I